you hear about checkpoints happening. You don't hear about, you know, 40 some people coming out and getting people to avoid the checkpoint. Like that doesn't happen. And that happens on a regular basis in Manchester. You guys copy? I moved here from the south side of Chicago and uh, I had heard stories uh, from a lot of people before I moved about uh, the DOI checkpoints taking place and how everyone goes out in cop blocks and manage when they happen. The two nights that I went out on there were, I would say around 20 to 40 of us. In the state of New Hampshire, uh, the police actually have to uh, inform the public when when a checkpoint is, but they don't say where. Just on the night, we would have to figure out where. This radio right here is uh, what we use when we, when we are cop blocking, so uh, this makes it a lot easier to use than like trying to text or call someone. Like while we're going across bridge, we see all the other cops like stationed, and we're like radioing back, like they're on the other side of bridge. And as soon as that was figured out, that would be posted to the event page. And the beauty thing is there's so many people that like we we can like diverge resources. Like some people are right in front of the checkpoint warning uh, uh, warning drivers not to you know turn, avoid the checkpoint. The sign that I was holding was typically checkpoint ahead or um, you know, uh, turn now. You'll have activists literally filming the checkpoint itself to make sure, like, you know, the cops aren't doing anything they shouldn't be doing, even though they shouldn't be doing it to begin with the checkpoint, but, like, you know, uh, keeping them accountable. The cameras were nice just to have your own, your own camera for your own safety. And whenever activists, activists would show up, we would try and organize, like, all right, we need people on this corner, we need people on that corner. I just walked to the location and saw which corner needed more people. Um, and chose my spot that way. You really want two people in the main area first and like go outward. Uh, so we would use the walkie-talkies to like, you know, get people to go to other places. We also had um, literature, cop block literature. And some of us would go up to like throughout the bars and be handing these out, uh, which talk about your rights. And while we're doing that, we would tell the bartenders and everyone else, hey, avoid, uh, avoid Bridge Street or avoid wherever the checkpoint is, usually it was on Bridge Street. And everyone knew what cop blocking is, um, which made it, uh, it, it was fascinating where they knew. Like, they, they would come up and thank, thank us, shake our hands. As much as we don't like the cops, most people don't either. When they get people on expired tags and chips in their windshield and uh, expired licenses, um, I can't believe that it's only for um, Intoxication, I have to believe that it's for revenue generation. Just strictly for revenue and the right bar tickets. But that's what most cops do. They, their jobs are to uh, give tickets to people and most of those tickets are victimless crimes. I felt good about what I was doing. It just felt, it felt normal, it felt right. My fiance, uh, Ann, who took her on a date to a DOI checkpoint. Basically, we start walking down Elm Street, and she's just holding a sign saying checkpoint on bridge, and like people are coming over and hugging her and you know, cheering and stuff like that. Like they believed in what we were doing in terms of standing up for our freedoms. I actually hate cop blocking, to be perfectly honest. I don't like dealing with cops. Um, but I'll do it when I have to do it. Like I'm not gonna back down. And when there's a, when I see a DUI checkpoint going on, like, you know, if there's, if we can get a victory against the police, we're gonna, I, want, I want victory against the police. The minds here have been freed, and once that happens, there's just so much room for all sorts of things, all sorts of creativity and. and knowledge and enlightenment. Everything I've done here, I would never even try to do in Chicago or anything like that. There's there's no numbers. Like You don't have a numbers game. You have a numbers game here. Move here. If you can't move here, organize with a bunch of other people, like-minded people, like, you know, start meetups and, you know, get together, uh, you know, plan events. Have like a system in place, like send out like a text to everyone, like, hey, this is going on right now, let's let's get together, you know, this location and then we'll all go together or something along those lines. You just gotta do it. <laughs> you take action. <laughs> if there's another checkpoint, if it gets announced again, we'll be out there again and there'll be a bunch of people out there, rain or shine, going out there and, uh, um, cop blocking that checkpoint. The Manchester police outfit conducted suspicionless vehicle checkpoints six times in 2013 and six times in 2014. These checkpoints were all funded by grant money out of DC. At each of those checkpoints, 
activists were out in numbers to inform their neighbors about the looming threat. The activists were so effective, or in other words, so detrimental to the revenue collection of the road pirates, that the Manchester police outfit held just one checkpoint in 2015. But tyranny has yet again reared its ugly head. Last week it was announced that a checkpoint will be held in just one month, on April 22nd. If you're within driving distance of Manchester, feel free to roll on up. A link to the checkpoint party event is in the description. Oh! Where is the signal?